I'm a very strong proponent of non-till. In other words, we don't cultivate the soils through the springtime or through the summer. I feel that by leaving the grass culture, we have a very much stronger soil. We encourage earthworms for one. We have the roots that penetrate the soil deep. And also, again, because it's a rainy day, this grass is much greener, it's acting as a sponge. The fact is if we cultivate it, we would be cultivating six to eight inches deep and creating a plow pan, a hard pan, if you will, with our cultivation equipment. Cultivating soil is very detrimental to the soil, if you will, because you're, you're creating a hard pan that you cannot penetrate with soil, I mean, excuse me, with water or nutrients or oxygen, which are all vital to any plant's health. For example, you look at a forest land behind us, you have trees growing in a grassland and they compete very well. They're not hurting each other. They all work symbiotically. The same is true with a vineyard. Now, what we do do, though, to minimize some of the competition is we'll put a band of Roundup to control the weeds for immediate competition through the year. But the benefits that I find of a cover crop that's permanent, whether it's mowed or not mowed right now, is the fact you could be on this any time if it's because again the water's being wicked down or up if you will and the fact is if we get a significant amount of rain and I need to spray in the next couple of days I could be on this vineyard whereas a cultivated vineyard there's absolutely no way we're going to be able to get that equipment on there same at harvest harvest of 2009 we had a uh, five inches of rain a little bit unprecedented but enough rain that kept a lot of people from getting out there and picking their grapes and making a big muddy mess I was able to get, if the winery said, can we pick your grapes, you know, day or two days after the rain, I said yes. We were able to get on those soils with our harvest equipment and the manpower to get that crop off before the molds and the rot set in. So it is important to have good management techniques. Here in this vineyard, we have a lot of bluebird boxes. And the little bluebirds of happiness, if you will, but actually a lot of these houses are inhabited with bluebirds and the bluebirds actually eat the insects the mosquitoes the the moths whatever they can catch and weren't you know the centipedes and they feed their young and so it's just a regenerational thing so pretty soon it's time to clean out their nests out of these houses so a next family can move in and here and i think on this 15 or 18 acres we've got probably 30 boxes and i like i say pretty much all of them are inhabitant with bluebirds you know, or sometimes you'll get finches in there, but not very often, but generally bluebirds. The, well, birds can be also detrimental if they're house finches or linnets. Starlings later in the season could be really a problem. Uh, if you're down in the Canaris area where we grow a lot of Chardonnay or Pinot Noir, a lot of netting goes on, uh, just a protective netting over the canopy to, to minimize the bird pressure to eat the fruit because not only do they pluck the fruit but they can damage the fruit creating an avenue for rots or some of the degradation of the fruit to happen. Um, generally not much of a problem even as close to the hillside as we are here. We will see starlings later in the season kind of like uh, crabs doing the cleanup you know work but some people report starlings have a lot of problems. But generally it's the, the house finches and the linnets and things like that that are a problem. How do you keep them away? Um, good question. The, the netting is one for sure if you need to go through the expense of netting. And I mean literally it's either a white netting, you know, like quarter inch, not quarter inch, uh, one by one squares. Bands in Carneros where they have like the reflections. And the yeah, and I was going to say, and then the other is the mylar tape, the bicolor or the single colored mylar tape you could put up on a tall canes or the sticks or something. So. What does the mylar do? It just, you know, it's just a, it just yeah. catches their eye and they're, yeah, but it's like anything else. Sooner or later, it'll get used to it. Right. You know, so either you put more up or you put a scare eye up or something. Or in the, in the days of past, I don't want to say the old days, but in the days of past, we used to have propane cannons. But as Napa Valley gets more houses and more inhabited, you know, people don't want to hear a cannon going off in the mornings and at noon and night, you know. And sometimes people will patrol and they can use, um, you can buy shot sh shotgun shells that are not have any shot in them. They're just making a loud noise, you know kind of do the first impression and then a thousand feet up they do another boom or whatever but you know but again somebody's got to be patrolling and you know the crops are valuable Napa Valley grapes are very valuable to the grower and to the wineries and if you say to your winery well I'm sorry I let the birds 
have their way and we're 50 percent off you know some winemaker is going to be upset because he's counting on his 5 10 or 20 tons or whatever he's contracted for and you can't provide that so you know again got to all work together so what are the owls for the owls uh the owls are good for gophers and voles and any of the night creatures they can catch as well as hawks you know i'm very fortunate because we're very close to the hillsides here so we got a lot of red-tailed hawks right. that can come in and do their thing and eliminate some of those varmints mm -hmm. you know you say well how come we don't have deer well we don't have deer here you know if we did there's not a deer fence there's no deer gates but you know i've never had to worry about deer in this vineyard and as close as we are to that vast hillside so you know i mean so do the varmints eat the vines or they can especially on young vines they'll girdle the trunks uh -huh. especially uh the deer mouse or the vole in that case they'll actually girdle the trunk the cambium layer and same with gophers moles moles don't eat anything but bugs they eat grubs and other var things like that you know grubs and sow bugs and whatever's in their way that's what they're looking for like in your lawns you know when they're making those long pathways they're just looking for insects so if you get rid of those kinds of insects you'll get rid of your moles eventually because there's nothing for them to feed on you know the gophers they're looking for you know uh, a place to make a mound and be destructive oh wrap it up they're, they're getting wet and cold. <laughs> all right darn it I could stand here all day. <laughs> yeah, I could, really. <laughs> I could. Well, because I do go to the high school, for those who don't know, and there's an FFA program, Future Farmers of America. So I help them with pruning. I help them with suckering. I, if I get called in the classroom, I mean, they, they never know what I'm going to hit them with, you know, and type of thing. So once you get me rolling, you can't stop me. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right.